real life sense. This is still two point paper copies. And we have, thank you, welcome back. We have uh, Representative Walt with us. Uh, yeah, I assume you're the reporter of the bill. Yeah. All right. So why don't, this is the first we're looking at it. Uh, we're just doing a brief overview. So why don't you, in general, uh, talk about what's going on here and then we can have uh, Legislative Council Katie McGrin walk us through the bill in a little bit more detail, but we don't have a lot of time. So we'll just have to get to okay. eleven. Yes, and again, my apologies to the committee. We don't know. We have we've been having a rough morning ourselves. No, I know, but it's been a little wild. Uh, <laughs> so this is this bill concerns uh a relatively new concept of the final disposition of human remains. It's a process called, process called natural organic reduction. And basically what it does, it's, uh, the terminology is a little bit misleading because they help nature out a little bit. Uh, basically the body is not involved in any way. The, bo the body is placed in a container with materials, which can be wood chips, it can be alfalfa, straw, some moisture, and some heat, and it's about to decompose. And- uh, In the ground? Some, no, in a container, in a facility. So the body is not there. Ah. Uh, so it's, it's tightly self-contained and the facility would have to be built in order to allow this process because there's nothing in a state like this right now. Uh, and so what we heard in testimony that in about a month, what you have is a cubic yard of compost. And that the, the process is so thorough and the heat generated is so high uh, that it removes all possibility of any pathogen surviving the process. And uh, basically even the most difficult components of the body, bones, teeth, and so on, are all decomposed. Uh, so that's what we're proposing to allow here. So this bill basically does just a couple of things. It ended up being 38 pages long, but that's because we changed so many instances of terminology. That's why it's so long. And so the essence of the bill is to allow this process and to treat it the same way as we do creation. In statute. And so uh, what we've done, one of the things we've made is that we removed the term cre crematory and crematorium, I think, for both of the statute. We now use the term disposition facility ah. to cover cremation and natural organic reduction. Because in the end, the, the two processes are similar in some way to the end result. You have something that is not human remains uh, in any recognizable way. You have either ashes or you have soil. There's only one instance in this current statute where we did not make that change. I think it's section seven. I might have to check here. That's the instance in which DCF, yes, it is section seven. That's the instance in which DCF is paying for the cremation and remains are not claimed. Current statute says that if that is the case, if DCF is paying for the process and the remains are unclaimed, the office of the chief medical examiner must hang on to those remains for three years. Now, that's a problem if you have cubic yard soil. It's not a big problem if you have an urn of ashes that can go on a shelf. But the, uh, we were told by the health department that could be a real issue, uh, especially if they have a cubic yard of soil, another cubic yard of soil, and another cubic yard of soil, 
they're, supp they're supposed to keep somewhere for three years. That's much more they can go into the world. And so we did not add natural or organic uh, reduction in that one section of the statute. We did not make any changes. And so natural organic reduction is not covered just in that specific case. The DCF pays for the cremation and remains unclaimed. Otherwise, we basically treat like cremation. So, so any questions? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So is this a relatively new, as far as I'm hearing about it, I mean, is it, does this law exist in other states or is this process fairly commonplace and prevalent elsewhere in the country? Yeah. It's legal now in three states, Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. And uh, I had a list, I think it was seven or eight states who were actively considering it. So it's not widespread. Okay. And I think it's been legal in those three states I've mentioned for only like two or three years. So yeah. what, what's the genesis? Is it like people are not satisfied with cremation or burial? They want another alternative? So many, but what is the what yeah. is your thinking? Why the other two don't work? That's exactly right, Senator. Uh, and there are those who uh, are opposed to the process of embalming and so on, and burial, because of the toxic chemicals involved. I think it's a waste of land, you know, to taking up so much land. But they are also not satisfied with the process of cremation. They prefer to be returned to the soil. And in some religions, that is basically it. The body is buried in the the body in any ways. So this process, this kind of speeds up the process. But again, you don't, you don't need a, a cemetery clock for this. Um, where, but a cubic yard is pretty big. Where, where does that? The, the, the family member takes that cubic yard, right? Brings it to their house where they bury that yard, that cubic box themselves. Or the right. Yard. We did not touch that. So whatever you can do with cremated remains in statute, now you can also do with the natural organic production. And so when you in, in, in burial, right now, does that by definition mean you involve? Somebody or could you? But no, not necessarily. It's it's a, a few years ago, we uh, we had our green burials. Yeah. Right. So, and uh, but that usually means the cemetery has to set aside a special section just for green burials, if I remember correctly. You could do that on your own land too. So the, okay. so the difference here would be if you if you had a green burial, you put the deceased in a coffin. You know, wooden box, box. Or, you know, card or box. box. As part of the cemetery here, you would be doing the same. There's no, nothing added at all in this, when you put the remains. No, it's all organic. Okay. And in the case of green burials, you can't use a, uh, a a box that decomposes or just a shroud. Right. right. You don't have to have, don't even have, to have a box to contain a or nothing. So what, what's the difference between a green burial and this? Well, in the green burial, you put the body in the ground and then let nature do its thing. And it, and you have to be very precise if I remember the testimony of this, exactly how deep you bury the person. Too deep and it doesn't work too shallow. Right? It's like three feet. Three feet. So it's three not feet. six feet. Right. Right. It's three feet. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I knew there were some parameters there. In the case of natural organic reduction, you don't have to worry about that at all. And you don't have to worry about you know a burial plot or cladding and all that. So that's that's essentially the difference. You don't the green burial it, it, it mandates a burial. Here you can keep the box however long you want, wherever you want. <laughs> or, or. So can I, can I just add about why cremation is also a challenge? Cremation used a huge amount of energy. Right. So uh, that is one of the, the reasons I've heard that people uh, uh, oppose it, is that it uses a huge amount of fossil fuel. And um, but and so that, that's one of the other things. But this is, um, you know, this is, this is uses less energy and is um, 
much more natural. It's so much cheaper. And a lot cheaper. So uh, that's one of the reasons I'm sort of puzzled by the DCF thing is if it's a lot cheaper, I would think DCF would want to be doing this. And we, we didn't preclude the opportunity for DCF to do this, did we? Oh, well, originally, when we originally wrote the statute, we did, but we got the notification from the health department that that could be a storage problem. It could be a storage problem, but it's a price opportunity for them to do it at a less expensive cost. True, true. And I so, suppose the other approach you could take is say the chief, the office of the chief medical examiner would not have to hold on to those remains for three years. Yeah. That would be another approach. But, so, uh, um, Representative Waltz, you may not know that once upon a time on House General, I did all the burial bills. That I, I'm sorry if that has become you. It's a, it's a particular kind of chore. Um, a joy at times as well. Um, I My question, perhaps as a Hindu, is just about uh, whether or not you looked at the issue of transporting organic remains across state and international lines. Absolutely. And we, we do not address that in the bill. Okay. We're leaving that alone, whatever exists. And our understanding is that there are agreements between the states. Okay. So if you have the misfortune of going to Maine and dying there, Vermont and Maine have worked out okay. the details on that. Okay. And international? The same thing internationally, yeah. There are agreements. So this facility, the understanding would be this facility would tell you, this is what you are legally allowed to do with mm -hmm. these remains. You can go back to this state, but not this country, et cetera, et cetera. But they are, it is an organic item. So I just wonder. Right, we, well, yeah, and, and, and we, we, we especially looked at that issue because what if you do die in another state, another mm -hmm. country that doesn't do this? Or what if you, you are supposed to take remains to a certain right. place is, is right. what I was thinking. Right. You're taking it. May, might not be able to get on an airplane, I don't know. Right, well, I, I've had that experience personally with having to transport remains okay. by airplane. And that turned out not to be an issue. It was okay. between Vermont and Florida. Right. And turned out not to be an issue. So we're just leaving that alone. We're not okay. going there. Because uh, whatever there was exists. existing law. Okay. Right. So Rusto, yeah, I just want to make sure I uh, understand the final disposition options. Could you uh, explain those? Well, uh, right now, uh, what we allow in Vermont, as you know, you can bury Grand Park in the backyard if you want to. We love it. And of course, you have to meet health codes and so on. And uh, the same thing applies to if you want to scatter ashes. Uh, you know, you may want to check with the health codes in your community just to make sure there are no issues going on there. You know, my father-in-law is, is beneath the newly planted maple tree, for example. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, and people do choose to do exactly yeah. that, and that's fine. And so we, we're not touching that. We're saying, okay, if you choose to, well, let me give you an example. The state of Washington has designated a state forest to which you may donate your composted remains. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, we didn't go there, but there, I'm certain, I'm certain there will be Vermonters who will say, I want to produce something. Can right. you make use of me? I'm, you're, I'm no longer here, so right. if you want to have a, a beautiful tree or, you know, whatever. Well, we're, we're, so it's compost. compost remains can be used in effect as compost. It can be. Uh, Colorado addressed this. We did not. Colorado forbids selling the compost. <laughs> you can see a reason for doing that. And they also forbid using it to grow it food for human consumption. But again, we didn't go there. But it, I think if you chose to put it on the vegetable garden, right. that's your choice. Uh, uh, so I guess we'll hear from Katie uh, where we did go in this bill. I assume it's not just totally open ended if a, if a, if a cottage, cottage or an industry develops around this new process. Right. Are there going to be any guidelines or regulations on how they operate? 
Yeah, yeah. Case will help you with that, but basically, whatever applies to crematoriums applies here. Yeah, because they have high heat capacity. Right. Actually, I can see dual purpose here with the heat that is expelled from crematorium to help heat a composting facility. But be a double yes. design, dual yeah. purpose. Sure, I imagine some of the same businesses would want to branch into this. Yeah. In addition to the energy issues that Senator uh, Clarkson has raised, uh, is there, it would seem that this would be less costly, right? I'm sorry, I said that. It would seem like this would be less costly in terms yes. of the process. Basically, uh, the cost involved in the facility here is having a place that you do this. You need a facility, you need a sealed container, and that obviously takes up space. So that would be one of the biggest issues, I think, for a business wanting to, to do this. So, so is it, is it as I think you said early on, you, you take the container, you fill it with wood chips or something like that, you place right. the body in there, and that's all there is to this? So that's and natural heat, you have to apply heat. You have to apply heat, okay. Yeah, it has to, like compost. So, okay. you right. know, professional compost facilities, okay. Okay. They can, because it's such a high heat that's generated by compost, that's why we can put in the compost paper and stuff. You can't do that in your backyard compost. It never gets hot enough. But a professional facility can do this, and it, the heat okay. if it's generated is hot enough to be able to do this. Right. And I understand that the, uh, uh, the containers have filters to allow the you know, natural gases that will come off. Are we in any way invited in this process? You make that pretty clear, but would it only be a matter of time where kits are being sold at Costco for people to do this in their own home? Oh, okay. I, I doubt it because I think this is a, probably a little bit too high tech. Okay, I, I didn't realize it, it sounds so simple. It almost sounds like a. a yeah, but I don't think you. So the containers are not just a simple container. They have to be fairly specific to the standard heat and they have to apply heat. So right, so yes. Okay, interesting. Uh, thank you very much. We'll, we'll move to Katie. Uh, Katie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good, I'm good to see you. <laughs> we are, we're, we are uh, due on the floor at 11. So maybe in 10 minutes, could you check us on the bill, however you want to approach that? Sure. Good morning, Katie McLean, Office of Legislative Council. Nice to see everyone. I haven't been in this committee in a while. Um, so first I should just say my internet connection is unstable. If we get disconnected, I'll call the committee room and maybe you can listen to me on speaker for 10 minutes, but hopefully it won't come to that. Um, so Representative Walsh did a great job of giving you the big picture of this bill. What it does is creates a, a new option for the disposition of human remains. And the bill defines natural organic reduction as the contained accelerated conversion of human remains into soil. So I don't think we'll have time to look at almost 40 pages of the bill in minute detail, but I thought it might be helpful to give you sort of the high level of what the bill is doing. The bill spans two subchapters in Title 18, the health title that governs uh, burial and cemeteries, and it also amends a chapter in Title 26, the licensing chapter with regard um, to funeral directors and operators of um, crematoriums. Um, so you'll see that the amendments kind of span those two chapters. Um, what the bill does is it sort of creates this sense of parity between um, the natural organic reduction process and the cremation process in terms of um, the rights and responsibilities of the operators of crematoriums, the same sort of rights and responsibilities in terms of permits that are needed, fees that are needed to be paid, licenses. Um, it would pretty much be equivalent between the two types of operators. So much so that when um, the House Committee upstairs was looking at the bill, OPR asked, 
can we have one term for both of these types of facilities? So we have just one type of license and one fee. So that's why a lot of the changes um, that you'll see in the bill are changing the language of either a crematory establishment or crematory facility to a disposition facility to mean a facility for um, either natural organic reduction or cremation. So that's one of um, the big pieces that you'll see. There's also some changes in the bill where um, maybe cremation or cremated remains are specifically singled out and there's you know, a strike through to just refer to remains. So it's more general instead of um, referring to um, maybe burial spaces, the language might be a little bit broader to talk about the um, spaces for, for permanent disposition. So there's a, a, a try to, um, I would say, use consistent terms when we're talking about natural organic reduction and um, disposition facilities. Um, so we're trying to get that consistency across two chapters and also a sense of um, trying to broaden specific terms so that natural organic reduction could be included. Um, and in some of the existing statutes. So those are the major changes. I'm happy to sort of walk through it a little bit more closely. One sort of hiccup that you should be aware of in Title 26, you'll see that there are two fee sections. And that's because about four years ago, a new fee section was adopted, but it doesn't take effect until I wanna say June 1, 2023. So we've had to amend the existing fee session that section that is um, active current law right now, and also amend the section of the fees that um, will take effect in June 1, 2023. Um, the fees are the same for, for both. Um, it's just a matter of a, a change to the fees that was made several years ago and not wanting to, um, to, to lose the, um, addition and changes of calling a crematory establishment a disposition facility in that language that was previously adopted. So I think that is the only sort of really technical piece that looks a little bit confusing in the second half of the bill. So uh, is there any uh, language in the bill? Uh, I assume this composting goes on and then the family members go and pick up the cubic yard of compost. Once they do, is there any further restrictions on this process as to what they can do with that? I mean, I don't think there's anything governing ashes right now in the room. So I assume there's nothing here either. No, there's nothing specifically here that governs how it would be used that wouldn't foreclose the health department for say from adopting rules to creating more specificity about um, where this, you know, type of remains could be um, um, spread, but it's not part of the bill. And I would add, I'm sure you'll take testimony probably from folks in other states who are doing this. But the testimony that they heard upstairs, it sounded like a family wouldn't necessarily take home that full cubic yard, um, that they would maybe take home a couple of containers, and that the majority um, would be maybe donated to a, um, a restoration project um, on state lands or state forest lands. Um, but you'll, I'm sure, hear more about that from, from folks in other states who are already doing this. Is there any, is there any country out there that is more mature in this process like it's commonplace in Europe I'm, somewhere? I'm not sure about country. I'm happy to look into it. I was only aware of the states that have adopted it. Be great. It strikes me this would be a very Scandinavian thing to have done ahead of us. I mean you're just a you know people who are energy because this, this is really a big energy improvement because we use a lot of energy and lots of is it, is, is, did you hear testimony or was there testimony, Katie, do you know of um, whether the way this has evolved in the states that have passed it, have the processes been joined at crematoriums or is there competition between this and the crematorium? Like so now the funeral home has now, funeral homes have expanded to be jointly with crematoriums and now is this just gonna be uh, or, or is it very distinct? 
Um, yeah, so the woman who testified, I believe she was from Washington State and she is operating a natural organic reduction facility. Um, I know they, they took quite a bit of testimony from her, but I don't believe they took testimony from maybe like a competitor who is operating a crematorium in the same state. They did hear from a funeral director in Vermont, and I think the um, there's generally a favorable response from the funeral directors, but I wouldn't want to speak from them. I think it would be worth your while to pull um, Vermont funeral directors in to get a sense of how this would impact the industry. There's lots on Google about this. I have not found another country though. Oh, here, world's first human composting facility is opening in Western countries is now it's, uh, is in Seattle. So it looks like America is first and there is not another country. The first one is supposedly in Seattle, Washington in 2021. Okay. And there's a picture of the whole system. Does anybody have any other questions for Katie? We're five minutes from the floor. We had another small bill dealing with the annual readjustment of the workers' comp uh, surcharge. We won't deal with that today, but it's sort of a must pass bill. Uh, so we'll take a break now. Thank you very much, Katie. You're and welcome. Now, nice to see everyone. I have to walk through the bill at some point, uh, but that's a good overview for us. So thank you. Okay. Bye.